you know what I meant. Good morning, everyone. How are you doing? And Happy New Year. Hey, have any of you been camping before? Have you? There's no light switches in your tent, is there? What do you use? A flashlight to light your path, probably to go to the bathroom and to yeah, it's yeah. really dark out there, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, this world is getting really dark. Kind of scary, huh? A lot of crazy things happening. And you might hear us adults talking about, <coughs> excuse me, living in the last days. Things are getting a lot worse out there. And a lot of people don't have Jesus in their hearts, do they? Um, in Psalm it says, your word is a lamp for my feet, a light on my path. What do you think that means? Can you tell me what that means? It means you show me the way and you keep me from getting off track. Very good. Yes, that's exactly what that means. We can always go to God's word for any answers that we need in life. Um, it can get pretty scary. And all we've got to do is turn to this word. This is a living word. And it's good for us today. And it gives us every answer that we need. And I want you to remember that, okay? Does everyone have a Bible? Okay, good. All right, let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for these children, Lord, for our future generation. Lord, lead us in guiding them to your word and to your ways. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
In case you guys missed summer yet, there was a nice tropical song for you. <laughs> um, but that song, En Kamuka Adonai, means there is none like you, Lord. And that is what we're going to be talking about today. So I want to wish everyone a happy new year. And I hope that you had a fun and safe jump into the year. What we know is that the beginning of a new year always starts relatively the same way. You're gathered around friends and family. You play games and possibly stay up to greet the new year at midnight if you're brave. Most people choose to make goals, change habits, or form new lifestyles. But it is important to look to the future sometimes and remember to follow the path that God has given us. But a lot of times, it's important to reflect on what we already know and to dig in deeper. And today we're going to be reading in the book of Psalms. We will be reading chapter 8 if you wish to follow along. And in this psalm, David speaks of God's glory and how men can use their actions to reflect upon God and his magnificence. So turn with me to Psalm 8. Psalm 8 says, O Lord our God, how majestic is your name in all of us. You have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babies and infants, you have established strength because of your foes. To still the enemy and the avenger, when I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is man that you are mindful of him, and the son of man that you care for him? Yet you have made him a little lower than the heavenly beings, and crowned him with glory and honor. You have given him dominion over the works of your hands, you have put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, and also the beasts of the field, the birds of the heavens and the fish of the sea, whatever passes along the paths of the seas. O Lord our God, how majestic is your name in all of the earth. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. There are tons of reasons that we live for God and that he is majestic. He performs miracles. He made the heavens and the earth, and most of all, he is always present with us, and he cares about us. God has a name that is powerful. He walked on water. He turned water into wine. He fed the 5,000, and most importantly, Mary's immaculate conception with baby Jesus. These are all miracles that God has done, and he continues to do miracles today. There are so many miracles. He has even used other people to carry them out, such as Moses parting the Red Sea. Our God is master, and he is excellent in all of the earth. Psalm 8 says that his glory is set above the heavens. The earth is not enough to measure his glory and excellence. God set the moon and the stars in their place, and he even calls them by names. He created the heavens and the earth, and he painted the sunset skies. And God, he looked out at all, and he called it. God is mag majestic because he crowned us with glory and honor. Out of nothing, heavenly objects were formed with just his fingers. And we live in a vast and a wonderful universe. At night, with the naked eye, one can see about 5,000 stars. And with a four-inch telescope, one can see two million stars. But with a 200-inch mirror of a great observatory, one can see more than a billion stars. Our universe that God created for us is huge. And yet, considering the greatness of the heavens, man just seems so small and insignificant. But in Psalm 8, David, he was wondering why such a big and great God would be so mindful of small beings called man. He knew that God was very, what cared about us, but he wanted to know why. It is evident in our day-to-day -day lives and personal testimonies that God truly cares about us. But David, he wondered why. He was confident that God carefully thinks about man and that he desires a personal connection with man. Matthew 10, 29 through 31 says, 
Are not sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground outside of your father's care. And even the hairs of your head are numbered. So don't be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. You see, God, he cares for the sparrows, which is what some would consider the pests of the bird species. And they are cared for by God. And because of that, we should love and we should take care of those birds and other people as well. Even though that we would rather see blue jays or cardinals at our feeders, God wants us to know that everyone and all things are loved by him. And it is our job as man to take care of them. You see, Psalm 8 says that through God we have dominion over other creatures and of the resources of this earth. Mankind has great responsibility. We're not just merely a part of the eco ecosystem, and believing so would deny God ordained dominion. You see, we are here to manage the creatures and the resources of this earth in a way that is respectful to God and that honors Him. We should be treating this world with great respect and care. And sometimes it looks like we're really failing at doing that. Or how many of you have been to a house with a dog or an animal that doesn't really behave, one that doesn't listen? You see, that's not how God intended it to be. The relationship between man and beast was to be that men were above the beasts. You see, we should step it up and really take care of the earth and of the beasts of the field that God has put us in charge of. We hurt our fellow men and abuse men, animals that God has given to us. But you see, we have dominion that God has given to us. You see, this promise of dominion is not only filled through man. See, we do not have dominion over a lot of things. Tsunamis, floods, natural disasters, bugs that carry deadly diseases. But our dominion will ultimately be fulfilled in Jesus, the ultimate man, because he was fully man and fully God. And because we follow Jesus, our dominion will be completely fulfilled in his resurrected followers. When we take a close look at Psalm 8, we can see three things. We can see that God made man. And he saw that everything that he created was good. And two, when God made man, he made something glorious. And three, God did not make man to be merely a part of the ecosystem, but to have that dominion. So even though Psalm 8 is a psalm about man's work and man's dominion, because of this, it is even more a psalm about God because it begins and it ends by speaking the majesty of God. You see, God, he created this earth for us to live on and to enjoy. Some people, they feel closer to God while they're taking a hike, fishing on a boat, working in the garden, and some people just relaxing outside on the porch. You see, nature, it has a way of reminding us of what God tells us in scripture. And so even though man has mistreated earth in many ways, it is important to take the time and enjoy the beauty that God has given us. And because God is so magnificent and he has given us this wonderful place to live on and enjoy, we worship him as Christians, Christians and we want to do that. So knowing we, what we know about God, what should we do? Well, first we should be praising God. You see, praising God, it looks different for everyone. There's no right or wrong way to do it. But we know that praising God is a joyful celebration of God's goodness and of God's grace. And you see, he deserves our glory and he is worthy of all of our praise. So when we praise God, it also serves as a reminder to ourselves of God's goodness. Psalm 22, 3 explains to us that God is present during our times of praise when we want to worship him with our heart, and our mind and our soul. You can praise God through prayer, lifting your hands in worship, singing, clapping, even through um, painting or writing, reading scripture, and by just sharing God's goodness with other people. If you have believed in Jesus and you are a follower of Christ, it is also your job to witness to others and share with them what God has done in your life. You do not have to be super knowledgeable about the Bible because God uses us right where we are. We can go to stores and ask, how is your day going? And actually mean it. Sometimes we get so caught up 
into the routine. And we only ask just because it's, it's what we do. You see, how many of you have enacted or been in this similar conversation? How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. Such a meaningless conversation. What, what does good mean exactly? Maybe we should instead ask, hey, how has your day been going so far? Oh yeah, I'm so glad to hear about that. What has made your day go so well? Even just changing your words will set you apart from all of the other people who have just asked, how is your day? Even just changing our sentences, even just changing our words, we can witness to other people and make them ask, what makes them so different from us? Why are they so happy? And then they learn it's because we have Jesus in our hearts. It is one thing to ask and to care, and another to ask just because society expects us to. But if we show God's true love, we can let it pour out in every moment, and we can see change. Caring is what will set us apart from hundreds of other people who just asked. You see, but without God's presence in our own lives, we will have nothing to pour out, nothing to share with other people. And so it's important for us to establish our own personal time with the Lord. Because if we're not in the Word, and we're not learning about God, and we're not um, trying to grow our relationship with Him, and we try to pour out to others, we won't see any fruit. And Satan, he'll see us coughing up every last bit of our knowledge and of God's love, and he will make us even weaker. You see, everyone struggles with reading their Bible and making it a constant habit. And I would be lying if I said I didn't struggle with that. But you see, one thing that has helped me with my personal time with the Lord is surrounding myself with other believers. You see, when I went to college at the beginning of the semester, I prayed for community and for friends who I could worship the Lord with. You see, and then I met friends. I started going to a Sunday night group with a bunch of other people my age. We all worship the Lord together. And I can tell you that having community and having those people is a fantastic thing and will help you in your relationship with God. Having people there to hold you accountable, having people there to discuss the Bible with, it's what God intended for all of us. We aren't meant to go through life alone, but to go through life with each other. And you see many people, they start goals at the new year, some that will be accomplished and some that lead to disappointment. But set a reasonable goal for yourself to get into God's word more. If you're not a morning person, don't make it a goal to get up 30 minutes earlier and spend it in time with the Lord. Because then you'll start to dread your mornings instead of looking forward to your time with God. But maybe instead set a timer for 15 minutes just at the beginning of a child's nap, as soon as they go to bed. You can dig into the Word over breakfast, or even listen to the audio Bible on your way to work or to school. But find a time that works best for you, and just stick to it. And tell a friend, tell your community of believers what you're doing so that they can hold you accountable and help you keep your focus for 2019. And maybe you even want to pray for a focus for God to lay on your heart for 2020. Choose a word through prayer, maybe that you should focus on this year. Maybe you need to be reminded of God's glory and majesty. Choose a word or a phrase and post it everywhere. Write it in Sharpie all over your house, but just make sure that in a year it'll be worn down enough to write another one right on top of it. But you see, use 2020 to praise God in his worthiness and magnificence. Grab a friend to do life with, and you will not regret it. God has chosen us to have dominion and responsibility, and it is time that we all step up. Join me as we together sing, Let's Just Praise the Lord. Lift our hands toward heaven and pray. 
good things the family can afford. Let's just turn our face toward heaven and praise the Lord. Just praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's just lift our hands toward heaven and praise. Join me for a word of prayer. God, we gather here today on the first Sunday of the new year. The new year is always full of exciting things and change. And God, we thank you so much for another year behind us and a new one before us. God, through all of our goals and wishes for this new year, help us just to remember your plan for us. Help us to praise you and remember you in all of our actions this week. And help us to remember the reason that you have put us on this earth to praise you, and to encourage others to do the same. In your sweet, majestic name we pray. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen.